A couple of days ago, I published this video right here, which was about capturing multiple full HD cameras and a screen recording with OBS and then easily edit that in Premiere Pro. However, I got a comment from Alex asking, why not use source record 0.2.0? Now, I immediately had to look that up and see for myself what was going on there. And now I wanna tell you a little bit about what is going on there. And of course, about the whole ecosystem of OBS because it's quite marvelous. Of course, OBS being a open source screen recording, live streaming, and much more application that many people specifically on Twitch, but also on YouTube Live and other platforms use to stream whatever they do in terms of their video work, their gameplay, and even educational content to the web. You can use this application to combine different types of images, sources, video files, screen recordings, input as cameras, HDMI capture cards, and so much more. And the amazing thing is, this application is completely for free to download for everyone, and it is open source, so anyone can really also build on top of it. On top of all of that, OBS also has a plugin structure so that other people can build extensions for OBS to add onto its functionality. And one of the people that does a lot of plugin work is Excel Draw. And he actually makes a couple of very, very handy extensions or plugins for OBS. And one of the ones that I wanna talk about today is the one suggested by Alex, which is also a very new plugin in the OBS eco space or ecosystem. And that is called Source Record. Now Source Record essentially is a plugin which gives you the option and possibility to add a filter on top of sources as well as complete scenes to stream those to different destinations than your original stream, as well as record those individually into their own files, making it possible so that you can actually record multiple camera perspectives, screen recordings, and also the mixed output in a way as a ISO recording. So you have individual files for all of these different inputs. And on top of that, you have the recording or the stream that you actually want to output. Now, this of course is a plugin that is published on the OBS forums. You can find the link to that in the description down below. I will have that there. And one very important thing that I always look for in the plugin ecosphere is that it actually is supported on multiple platforms. Now, luckily, this is actually available for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So this is for just about everybody. Now to go ahead, you just wanna go onto the download button and then you have to choose between what kind of system you wanna use. I of course would download the PKG file right here. And once that is downloaded and in my downloads folder, I can just click on the zip file to unzip that. And once I have that ready, I have the PKG file. Now, something to be aware of here is oftentimes with Mac OS, you might actually not be able to just double click this and instead you will have to right click and then install it that way. So if I double click this, it actually opens up the installer. But if that is not what happens for you, you can still right click the file or control click. So you hold the control key on your keyboard and then open and then it actually should open up the installer just like normal. And then you can go through the installation process. Of course, you need your password and then that is done. Now, I already have this open here in OBS and installed as part of this installation. And what we can do now with this plugin installed, there's really not much that you have to do. You can actually just go ahead and either on individual sources that you have inside of a scene or on a scene itself, you can simply right click, go into the filters menu and right there you want to go to effects filter and here you will have when you click the plus icon, the source record filter. And now when we add that, we have a whole bunch of settings or changes that we can make here. Now, first up, you have a segment where you have the record feature, then you have a replay buffer, you have streaming, so you can actually stream this to different servers, and you also choose which audio you actually want to capture for all of this. 
And lastly, we choose the encoder as well as the encoder settings. Now, if I were to set this up, or let's just remove this for a second, close this off because I want to show you that the same thing also works when you go into a whole scene. So here I actually already have added this and then I have these settings available once more. Now what's really cool here is that this works with multiple things and that of course is one of the really beneficial things for specifically doing clips of for example a live stream or wanting to record multiple input sources and then in the aftermath actually then worry about what you want to display on screen and when. Now I've actually seen this as a viewer a bunch of times already with clips of live streams. So you have, for example, someone who is reacting to a video and they have the video big on the screen and then have the tiny little screen with the picture in picture where they show themselves. Now the annoying thing there is that now when you have this reaction that you cut into a clip and you actually want to pull up the picture in picture and make it bigger, then the picture in picture is all pixelated because it is just recorded as this tiny little frame on screen. And once you blow that up to become bigger so that it fills the screen, it is of course going to be pixelated and really bad quality. So with this plugin now, you have the ability to actually change those cuts in the aftermath and make those clips specifically more interesting if you have someone who is specifically editing those or if you're cutting those together yourself. Now in my own purpose or in the way that I see this most useful, you can actually make it so that you have one OBS instance running and you have a recording of a camera and for example a screen recording at the same time happening recording into individual files and then once you are done with the recording you can bring those up into Premiere Pro and then edit those for example with a multi-cam sequence making it possible that you can actually just individual switch between these scenes as you see fit in the aftermath. So that is one of the main benefits that I see in this, but it might be very different for you. Now let's dive into the settings for this and let's just try to create another source here. Let's say I want to choose a, another camera. Where is it? Virtual input. There, video capture device. And it's just called a video capture device. We want to have the FaceTime camera and that of course is the one that I have built into my computer. And now I am going to put this right here covering the loopy mess that is happening right there. And now I have two cameras here input into this specific scene. Now what I can do here is I can right click, go to filters. And as I've showed before, we can add the source record filter. And in this case, we say FaceTime. And now here, again, we have multiple settings possible. Now, the first thing that we have to decide is when should this be recording? And therefore, we have the record mode. This actually gives you always streaming, recording, streaming or recording. Now, if you say always, then this is actually not always. It just depends on whether or not the effect is actually active or not. This actually gives you the option, for example, to actually have a shortcut binding for this kind of thing so that you can activate this effect and deactivate it. And based on that, it would actually start and stop a recording. So that's one possibility. And of course, if you wanna have it streaming or recording, like that of course kind of makes sense. Now, in my case, I'm gonna choose recording because that's how I use this, but it might actually be more interesting to use streaming or recording if you, for example, want those ISO recordings whenever you are creating a stream. Now, of course, you have to make sure that your hard drive doesn't fill up and all of those things. And then next we have the path of where you want those files to be stored. I would like to store them in the movies, recordings, and then sources. So that's the individual sources of recordings. Then we have a file name format, and I'm gonna just add FaceTime to that. We want to record in MKV, as you know, MKVs are more reliable in their recording. So whenever something goes wrong or something doesn't work quite as well it, as it should, then this recording will still be, and you just have to remux it if you wanna open it, for example, in Premiere Pro. And that's already all the settings that you might need to do in this recording section. However, you also have to scroll all the way down to the encoder and then of course also the settings that you wanna choose here. Now, I have mentioned in past videos 
the H.264 hardware encoder on the MacBook Pro is actually really capable of doing good encodings and it gives you the option to have not so much going on with the CPU. Instead, if you use the X264 encoder, the quality might be higher. However, your CPU will do all the work for you and your spinning fans will be pretty loud in at least MacBooks. Now with the hardware encoder, I usually choose the highest bitrate that I can because it is a variable bitrate encoder. It just uses that as it sees fit. And then we have the key intervals. There you can choose something between one and two. I usually put a one in there because that in my experience improves the ability to edit those files later on. USB frames depends on your taste. I leave it checked. And then of course, if you wanted to, you could also put a RTMP server and the stream key here. If you wanted to stream this specific source to a different RTMP server or something, then you could do that here as well. Now with all of that, now we can close this off and go into our other source, go into the filters there and open that up, source record. Now I'm gonna call this ATM. Say we wanna again record when recording. We want to choose the same folder and here we wanna also add the ATM at the end, go all the way down, Apple hardware encoder, choose the bitrate use B frames and one in terms of the keyframe interval. And then of course I remember I have set up this here as well, the source record on the whole scene. And let's just leave that turned off. Yes, let's, let's do this none so that this is not recording at all. Now, whenever I would hit the record button right there, these two would start recording and I wanna just check out the settings that I have here. I have the base canvas at full HD, output is full HD as well. And for uh, recording here, the settings are that this is going to go into the recordings folder. We are going to have the MKV file and we want to have the Apple hardware encoder with the same settings here. We want to have the keyframe interval at one. And with that, we apply all of that. And now as this is recording, we can see how these stats are performing here. You can see we don't have missed frames to rendering or encoding. However, it is also saying that the average time to render is in the yellow area and not necessarily in the green. So that's something to keep in mind that your system actually will need to be able to actually handle those multiple sources that you want to be recording. And as you know, we have right now, we have one recording of the whole program. So for example, if I were to change between these two scenes, now this is recorded into the main output file, but it is not recorded into these two individual files. Those two are just going to be recorded completely from start to finish without any of the transitions. So if I stop recording now and I switch to the folder with the recordings, you can see we have the MKV file right here. And if I show you this, that is the combination. And then if I go into the sources, now here we have the clean file with the little bit of a loop going on right there. And then we have the FaceTime file, which has just the FaceTime camera in it. And of course, now if I remux these, and you can use the OBS remuxer for that. So we go into file, remux recordings, and we wanna choose these two files right there. And then we wanna also remux the main recording. So all of the three files getting remuxed and that's done really quickly. Going back and now with the MP4 file off the uh, FaceTime or the ATM, you can see we have the loop going on right there. We have that twice. And now when I go into the FaceTime camera, we just have the FaceTime camera recording in here. And then if I go back to the main recording, you will be able to see that there at some point it actually switches to black because we actually transitioned to the other scene and this part actually has this transition recorded. So that's a basic overview of this plugin and what it is capable of doing. I think that this is really a game changer and in my humble opinion, I do believe that this should be a feature that is actually just built into OBS 
by default in the actual version. Now with OBS 27, we already got a whole bunch of features and now we actually even have the virtual camera be a full integrated part of OBS. So it's not really that far fetched to see a feature like this implemented once there is a plugin like the one screen rec or source record plugin that now exists. So that's something that might be coming in the future or at least I am hoping that something like this will be coming in the future. Now, something else that is really powerful here is that you can actually also do hotkeys with this. So if I do a screen or source record, then you can see that we actually have the source record enable and disable for the main scene ATM, which is the scene that I have set up here. And as you remember, I have a filter on that one, but then we also have the ATM mini and the video capture device and all of these have their own shortcuts to activate and or enable and disable the recording of these individual source recorders. So that again is something that is I think really powerful and I don't necessarily know yet what might be done with that but I can totally see shortcut combinations and features built into stream decks or you build your own workflows for stuff like that make this a possibility. And of course, for the replay buffer, this might be a really cool thing that you can actually choose between different sources as your replay buffer. And this makes all of this very, very powerful. Now, I hope this video was a good overview here. I really enjoy when I get information like this from the comment section. So thank you for Alex for pointing this out. I didn't even know that this plugin exists. And to be honest, I think that it is relatively new and probably only existed for a couple of months at this point. But once more, I'm super stoked that this does exist. And I think that it's incredibly powerful to make multiple recordings happen at the same time so that you can then later on choose which of these scenes or which of the camera perspectives you would like to show on screen. Now, if you wanna have a powerful hardware solution for something like this, then of course you can also go for the ATM mini. However, you will have to go for the pro ISO or the extreme ISO because only that is capable of doing ISO recordings, which means that you would get a file for every single HDMI input on top of the recording of the whole switched cut scenes that you made with the device itself. If you're interested in that and learning more about that, I'm gonna try to get my hands on a extreme ISO of the ATM mini lineup to be able to also talk about those kind of things. In general, I think that the hardware solution here is a very powerful one for a lot of good reasons, mainly being that you don't have to tax your CPU with any of the work of the encoding on and such things. But of course, that also comes with the downside of being a extra device that you might want to or have to purchase. And if you have a really powerful PC, that can do the whole work for you there. And of course, it also depends on what you want to do with those ISO files, because maybe you can reduce the quality in terms of the encoder settings or stuff like that. Now, if all of this was interesting or helpful in any kind of way, I would appreciate a thumbs up. That always helps out. If you have any questions, you can leave those in the comment section down below or join my Discord server, which I recently launched, and you can have a conversation there. Now, with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day, make it your life, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.